Hello again. Um, today I'm doing a video based on an idea given to me by Caboose Juice. And he said, basically, like, since you're like a collector of like vintage and that's like your main thing, why don't you like make a video about modern fragrances, as in like fragrances that are still available that you could like recommend or that you like um, and that you could recommend to people? Uh, even though they're modern and they're still available. Um, I thought that is a good idea. It would give us like, it would make it slightly uncomfortable for us. So I wouldn't be able to like retreat into my comfort zone, which is like vintage. And I wouldn't be able to. Oh no, I suppose it would just give us like more parameter, like take us out of my comfort zone is probably the best way to put it. Um, So... That's what I'm going to do. These, these are 10 fragrances that are still available widely on the market. And they're all recent releases, apart from maybe one. Um, yeah, they're all sort of released. They were all released this century. Maybe two. Um, but they're still available widely for everybody. Because uh, that's part of the problem with the fragrances I talk about. Um that they're not widely available and people can be like, oh, wow, it's a very niche sort of thing. So I thought I'd like open it up a little bit and uh, talk about things. So I might do another one of these videos as well, because as I've been going through, there are, there are quite a few there. I haven't chosen cheapies. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on, on some fragrances that are quite cheap that I think are worth the money. Because um, as I was looking through my collection, I spotted a couple of perfumes. I was like, my God, I haven't seen you for years. I sprayed one on. And it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and I only paid, honestly, I only paid about 13 quid for it. And it's absolutely brilliant. Um, so one of the things I wanted to do was make this list a little bit different. Um, although there are a couple of very familiar perfumes here. And, um, but I wanted to add it in, but I haven't made it like a cheapy sort of thing. Because really, I do believe you get what you pay for. Um, so, yes. Here we go. So the first one, these are in no order. These are just 10 perfumes that I could stand behind. And even though they're modern and I haven't brought, I haven't used fragrances as well, that their modern formulation is really poor compared to the vintage. These are still perfumes that you can go out and buy with confidence today or tonight or tomorrow. Um, so these are all still good perfumes that I'm happy to wear and do wear. So we'll start with we'll start with a familiar face. <clears throat> Tom Ford Noir Extreme. Everybody knows what this is. I'm not going to dwell on it for too long. It's absolutely fantastic. It is extremely masculine while being still having that vintage sort of vibe. The bottle's obviously very vintage. Tom Ford. I imagine if he were to sit down and talk with Tom Ford, we could talk about the old masculine perfumes from the eighties, and I think he, I think we'd get on like a house on fire. Um, I think he does do he does do experimental stuff and strange stuff. Um, you have to think. I mean, what before Tom? What before Tuscan leather was there like Tus Tuscan leather? That was a totally different fragrance from what had come before. It was outrageous. So he's not afraid to change things up. We know about his history with Gucci, and his history with YSL. Um, and his own brand, of course. This one is still widely available. And I haven't smelled a modern one, but mine was bought. Mine is B76. I bought mine in like 2016, 2017, something like that. So this is still sound and it's a lovely smell. Um, I could easily recommend anybody to buy that. If somebody said, oh, is this a good fragrance? I would say, yes. Yes, it is. It's very nice. So that's the first one. Second one, we will go with... We'll go with this, a designer. Now, this is still available, and it's cheap. And it's in a similar vein to the previous fragrance, Tom Ford Noir Extreme. This is Bulgari Man in Black. This is a boozy... It's like a boozy, soft, vanillic... Like, comfort. Like, slightly tipsy sort of fragrance. When you smell it... I mean, I've ruined the... I've, like, I've, I dropped it on its head, bless it. Um... But it still sprays, thank God. Um, and I don't wear this as much as I should because I do actually really like it. Like, there's never been a point where I don't, where I've sprayed this and thought, oh, I don't really like that. But I don't wear it as much as I do because I've got all these other, I've got all these other sort of mad 
perfumes everywhere. Oh, the light's really good today. Maybe I should film earlier in the day more often. Um, I've got all these other bonkers perfumes. Got some matriarch up there. Look, anyway. Um, this is a really nice, soft, vanillic, boozy sort of fragrance. It's it's different, but still safe enough. Um, I can't see many people saying that they don't like it. It is masculine. Um, the bottle's really nice. The spray is absolutely awful. Um, I'll see. I mean, that is not good. Um, but yes, it does still smell nice. And I could, if somebody asked me, that was the main criteria. If somebody asked us, because I say, yes, I like that and I've got it. Yes, and I do own all of these. And I have bought them all with my own money. So, you know, I put my money where my mouth is. That is a really nice little boozy note at the top. And made by Alberto Marias. So, there you are. Next one is... Um, next one, we'll go with this. This is an absolutely brilliant fragrance. Right, I know Pep from the Sentinels talked about this. I can't remember whether his is the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum. This is the Eau de Toilette. Um, 100 mil. And this, seriously, if my house got robbed, and I'm touch wood, if my house got robbed and somebody stole all my perfumes, this would be one of the first ones I'd go back out and buy because it can. it's a cure-all. It, it can do everything. Um, it's got a fantastic bottle with a magnetic cap as well. Um, it's like a vanillic... And I'm not a big fan of vanilla, um, but the last three fragrances I've said there are like vanilla. It, it shows there's a big trend in perfume now um, towards vanillic fragrances. But this has got like a black currant. It's got that dip tea off scent, like off piece sort of smell about it. You know, it's 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 different, but it still smells great. I've never had anybody turn around to me and say that you smell awful wearing this. Um, there's the cap, thirty four Saint Germain. 34 Saint-Germain Boulevard. 34 Boulevard Saint-Germain, I beg your pardon, by Diptyque. It's absolutely fantastic. You should try and dig this out. Diptyque's a really good house. I really like Diptyque. Um, I said on a video before that I've got five Diptyques. I've actually got six because I wasn't counting this one. You could wear this year-round if you wanted, but I tend to wear it in the autumn and the spring. So it's, a, it, it's one of those perfumes that actually sticks in me, like, um, rotation all year round. I've only got a few because I'm pretty ruthless when it comes to, like, putting them in that place. Um, but this is one that you could ease if you needed a signature scent. This would be one of the ones I would go out and buy straight away if I lost all my perfumes. Um, number four is, we'll go with this, a little bottle. Of Herba Fresca. This is fantastic. It's mint and it smells like a garden. Like, like a garden. It smells fresh and light. And it's great for humidity. Um, it really does cut through. it. It's, it's minty without being toothpasty. It's... It's green without being, like, verdant. You know, it's, it's not like... It's not like green green. It's like a light green. It's... I don't want to say it's floral, but it's got that light touch to it. Um, this is widely available. You can get this at discounters, and it's it's a really good price, and it's an excellent fragrance. It's made by Guerlain. It was brought out in 1997, I think, or 96, something like that. Um, but it's like Guerlain. This is the, the bonuses, the perks of having an in-house perfumer. Your reformulations are always kept kept really like like strong. You know, you don't just have someone random come in one day or like a student and like they're throwing like the, the old formula down and they say like make it like make it new and they've got no idea. They've never handled the perfume before and they've got no vested interest in reformulating it. So um, this isn't a homework perfume. This is a this is a beautiful perfume. It's totally unisex, I think. Um, and it's absolutely lovely and it smells fresh. Um absolutely beautiful i would i would I'm, it's a shame they don't come in any bigger bottles that's that's the only problem with it um next i will go with i'll go with one you've probably never heard of i've never seen anything reported about, oh, Christ. it wouldn't be a video of mine would it if i didn't throw something around you can tell i haven't used this as much as i should it's covered in dust that's terrible um 
But there we are. This is Corres 20. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't. I can't. Um, this is called Corres 20. And this is a Greek brand. And this is a rose vanilla. Um, very cheap. It's like 50 quid for... Uh, it's £49 for like 50 mil. Um, but it's a lovely fragrance. A light rose and a, and a very... And a very sort of light vanilla as well. It's not too strong, but it smells it smells really good. It's decent quality for the money. I wanted to get one in here that was like a little bit different, but I also wanted to get one that was like not gonna break the bank either. Um and this is a really good fragrance. I'm not this is this is available from their website. I'm not sure how to get it from, from retail. I bought it off a friend. Um but this is available and you should be able to buy it. And I do think the ship to like around the world. So something to try and find. Um, it's, it'll be out there somewhere because I've seen it. I've seen it, especially on their website. So if you go and look, you should be able to find it. Oh, halfway through. Next, I'm going to go with this big daddy and tears this is widely available the current formulation is absolutely fantastic as we we're talking about about in-house perfumers this obviously chanel they have christopher sheldrake in charge of their ingredients they have oliver polish in charge of um formulating the perfumes actually perfuming the perfumes um and this is something i'll always i'll always have in my collection it's absolutely fantastic i can't wait for it to get a bit to get a bit colder so i can bust this out um i've tried the original formulation i think it was steven sprout who sent me some and it's it's just more spicy um it's not more civety it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like you can tell it's older and it's slightly thicker and denser but the the mod this formulation is fantastic like i said this this bottle i'm happy to have this bottle and i don't feel like going out and spending the money on it on a vintage um i can't remember when this one was made but i would have bought this in 2017 2018 um very masculine very strong i'm gonna do a review of this at some point um and over here i've got an absolute unicorn which is the sport cologne um which is essentially the same fragrance just a little bit less dense um yeah it's it's really it's very interesting so that is Antaeus, very mossy, I like moss. Uh, next is my scent of the day. This is still available in shops. I wasn't sure whether to put this on or not. This is Gucci Guilty Absolute. Every, there's nothing I can say that you haven't already heard. It smells like a hospital floor. It smells like a hospital on fire, bandages, TCP, that sort of vibe. Um, I thought I would wear it today because I was feeling particularly bullish. And it is a bullish sort of perfume. This is the type of thing that like moves people out of your way. Um, it gets attention. Necessarily like people thinking that it's like, oh, you smell great, but you won't smell like everyone else. This is like a real perfume perfume. You know, this smells like, this smells different. It smells unique. You'll stand out and you will be smelled. People will know that you smell it. You have to, you have to be prepared to answer questions when you wear this, you know. Um, not like not like you've been arrested and you have been interviewed, but you know, like somebody could come up and you say, "What the hell are you wearing?" You know what I mean. You have to be able to say, "Gucci, guilty, absolute." What about it? You know, um, because people will think you, surely you are not wearing. You don't smell like that on purpose. You know, people will be surprised. Um, I always think this smells very. Oh God, I always think this smells very similar to this. Rien. Um they've got that vetiver leather. I think when you combine vetiver and leather together, you get a you get a medicinal vibe. Um and both of these have that in, I believe. Uh I could have picked Rien as well, but Eldo's a little bit tougher to get. So yes, that is that one. Next. What do we have? There's three left. Uh, next one, I'll pick this one. Another mint fragrance. This is Menthe Fresh. Menthe Fresh. What I like about this is that if you look right here, Edition 2. So this is the second 
edition of this fragrance i imagine there are it's more up now but i have smelled the latest ones this is really good this is a sweet mint this reminds me of like it's a little bit like it is a little bit like chewing gum but not necessarily in a bad way there's more to it than that um but it, it it smells clean it smells it's totally unisex it smells like it does have that chewing gum sort of thing i can't remember whether it's spearmint i think it is spearmint and it's it's got a sweetness to it like 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 chewing gum um but it's still beautiful i've used let's have a look you can see i don't know if you can see the level there um stop wobbling uh, yeah, you can see I've used a lot of this, but you have to reapply this. The performance isn't very good. The performance on Herba Fresca isn't very good either. But the rest of them are pretty pretty solid performers, including the last two. Um, you will have heard of this, I'm sure. Um, if you haven't, well, here you are. It's uh, Healy. I haven't smelled it. I, I haven't smelled anything else from the brand, unfortunately. Um, not that I can remember anyway. You might be wondering what these two these two black marks are. I'm starting to wonder what these two black marks are. I think I've uh, touched something sooty. Anyway, second to last is a fragrance I have had for a long time. It's the, I think this is the original formulation, but the latest one's fine. And this is Tobacco Rouge by Fade On. This is a, a tobacco fragrance without the note of tobacco in listed. Um, I don't know how they've done it. The, the bottles are cheap. Um, it's just a bottle with a label with a, like, this is like a, this is like a, like a covering that goes over the bottle, like you could scratch this off and it would just be like a clear bottle. Um, but it's a beautiful tobacco fragrance. It's very different. It's very tobacco-y. It's got a strong cinnamon note in it. And you, you keep getting whiffs, there's no de parfum, so you keep getting whiffs, whiff, wafts, I beg your pardon, all day um it keeps coming back and it sticks around all day it's very strong very good performer um and it gives you a lot of different it gives you like a lot of different facets of tobacco it's not sweet there is a touch of sweetness but it's not sweet in like a tobacco vanille sort of way if you can imagine tobacco vanille without the sweetness of the vanilla it's got that sort of vibe it's got like a it's almost got like a bitter sourness to it as well um, I'll be reviewing this. I remember years ago when Fragmental first started making videos, he was a huge fan of this, uh, this and Unbois Vanille, and we both had that in common. Um, great fragrances, those. Great fragrances. Um, but this is Tobacco Rouge. And last, but certainly not least, it's a tower, but it's not Laird du Desert Marocain. No, this one is Lone Star Memories. If you play computer games, this smells like Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption 2, to me. Um, I wore this specifically on the night that that came out, and I played it for the first time, and this just smells like cowboys to me. Um, and it smells, and it really, really nails it. Um, it's got a, it's like got a, got a, it's got a gun, like a gun smoke um sort of vibe to it like a used weapon sort of vibe to it it's not metallic though that might have a tiny metallic note but it's blended beautifully it's, it smells like a tower perfume um it's got like vetiver it's got like an almost soapy vibe it's like it's like clean as well it's got a tiny medicinal vibe but it's got a warmth to it and a strength to it um and the name Lone Star Memories absolutely nails it. It's green, but it's like a little bit fresh, but a little bit dirty as well. It's It's got that, what people call the Tower Art. I wish people would think of a new name for when a house has got like a signature smell. This, But this does smell like you could recognise this as a Tower perfume straight away. Um, I've also got something very rare, which is discontinued now and it doesn't have the little thing on the shoulder but i promise you this is lonesome rider which you can't get anymore and this is madness it smells like um this smell this takes the fuel uh idea and, and just like the violet and it just takes it and runs with it it's much more like fahrenheit than uh 
this one, the original. Um, he's got a habit of doing that, releasing a perfume and then releasing like a sequel to it. Um, but it's a brilliant house tower. I've got like, how many have I got? Two, four, five. I'm thinking of getting Incense Extreme as well. Um, that's it. So these are all perfumes that are still, you should still be able to get out and about in the world. Um, not, not many, I'm trying to be a little bit different. I'm trying to re like release videos with like perfumes in that aren't the same as everyone else. I was going to, but I didn't want to go like down the Beaufort line. Um, because they are a little bit too, like they are very different. Maybe I'll do that in future. Um, but I might do another, I might do another one of these videos because it's an interesting concept. So thank you, Caboose. Um, there were a lot of perfumes here that I couldn't use. Obviously I didn't realize until after how many like rare and strange and weird perfumes and, and also as well new, like I said about the formulations, there are some formulations I just couldn't put my, like I couldn't, I couldn't recommend to people that they should buy um, because so much of the modern stuff that it's like, they're not trying. It's like they're trying to get rid of them, you know? Um, and it's a shame. So that's why I couldn't do the Serge Luton. I've got like 15 Serge Luton lurking in there. So I might do, I'll, I'll do a Serge Luton video one day. It's one of my favorite houses. Um, but anyway, thank you very much. Let me know what you thought and I will speak to you soon again. Bye.